TV. Yo, what's good, everybody? Stack Stone bringing you another video. So, this video is twofold. It's kind of interesting in what's going on with social media. So, I want to touch on a couple of things. I want to, you know, I want to touch on the six nine because I got some inside intel on the six nine situation before he got locked up. So, I'm gonna tell you what happened with six nine. And I want to touch on the snitching, like people were snitching. And I got to bring other rappers involved with the snitching thing. So I'll touch on that a little later. But I really want to focus on, you know what I'm saying, the element of like, you know, when people start snitching and then, you know, not holding the weight and being accountable for um, your crimes when you get down with when you're getting down in the streets or whatever you're doing, at what point do you feel like, yo, I'm going to give somebody up because I can't handle the time? Now, 6 ix case. I'm going to tell you some intel on the 6 ix case. I'm going to tell you some things about Shoddy, too. So when I first came home from prison, after doing a 13-year stretch and all the maxes, I paroled to right on Shoddy Block, where he'd be at with these kids from um, La Costa Nostra. He used to be with this clique. He used to be with my little homie, Pop off and Pop off had a brother and his name was Skaggs. I mean, what's Pop off's brother's name? Scrams or something like that. He was a rapper. Um, hello? Yeah, his name was Skaggs. He was, um, I forgot. He, but he lived on Park Place. He lived on Park Place and he a nice underground rapper. I'm going to get his name in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was an underground rapper. And um, Scams? Scrams or something like that? But anyway, with Pop Wolf, they used to live on Park Place in Nostrand. So when I first came home, I used to go in their basement and I used to blow it down. And, and they had a studio down. He had a lit studio. And all them dudes from the neighborhood, cash bills, all of them used to be in that studio recording. So who was down there? I first met Shotty the first time I was on that block. And, um, this had to be 2006. So he was just becoming Damu. You know what I'm saying? And I was telling him about everything, about Damu culture, everything. I was, I was schooling him on everything. He was asking me about, you know what I'm saying, I, where I just came from, the wall, what set I was claiming. So that's the first time I was schooling Shadi. And Shadi was just becoming blood at that time when I first came home. So Shadi been blood for like, what, maybe 12 years because I came home 2006. So Shadi was claiming that sense, but he was new to it. And, um, who would have who thought that he would have um, become like this big manager um, for one of the biggest artists uh, that broke all these records in 2018? Yo, this kid broke crazy records on the internet. Like, he broke crazy records. I don't know he, I don't know how he caught that wave, but he caught a wave. But anyway, long story short, I schooled Shadi on some stuff, whatever, whatever. Long story short, 6 9 coming to the picture way later. Now, 6 9 he became black. In 2017 or something like that. Like, really? He was a new blood. So it was funny to me that I was watching all this, and I was like, this dude is a baby. Like, and I heard, like, all his history, that he was this, he was that, he was that before he became blood. So automatically, you know, I right, they blooded him, they, 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 they blooded him for the bag. They blooded him, him in for the bag. You know what I'm saying? So they secured the bag. My thing is, if you get those M's and you securing that bag, why you didn't make sure that bag is secure? Like, all you had to do is just be around him, get him out the Sprinter, get him to the show, get him back to the radio station, get him to the show, get him here, get him in the Sprinter, get him there. You know, have to have the team around, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? Well, money breeds envy and jealousy, you know what I'm saying? The bag, so the cross is in. Everybody know that 6 9 was messing with the wolves. Like, I was telling, I was telling the Billies, I was telling the Billies and, and, and and the ice and best stop. I was like, yo, that ain't going to last long, homie. They was bigger six and nine. I was like, it ain't going to last long. You know. And I and I was, his days was numbered. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing. He copped out the non-charges, but that's going to hold some weight. Like, he's going to do at least nine years, ten years, something like that. He's still young, so he got some time. My thing is, I hate to mention this and resurface it. How the did T.I. get caught with all them sub-automatic weapons? The big, he had Tom's, he had Thompson's, 
He had AKs and he had silencers. You can do five to ten years alone for a silencer, bro. So how did he end up getting a year in a day? And he was facing 20 years. I, I never seen a cop out like that. Especially if you was the had prior convictions. That's how they convicted him, because he had uh he had like a crack sale case that made him a felon in 99 or something like well, 97 or something like that? 98 or something like that. So I don't know what he did to to um persuade them. Look, there's so many people homies died in the line of fire. And just because your homie died, that don't give you like authority to go, you know, arm up. I mean, some dudes arm up, but when you get caught, the judge ain't gonna hear yo, your homie died, so I armed up. How did that happen? Especially with the feds. How? Like, so I never hear about him paying no money or nothing. Like, so he gave, I'm thinking he gave somebody up, son. Like, come on, on the low, somebody got knocked off that we didn't know about, and it probably from some information that T.I. gave him. Yo, homie, if you've been a dude in the system and you know about the feds and all that, yo, homie, you ain't getting no year for like eight, eight submachine guns and few silences, man. Well, you're not getting that. Oh yeah, another thing I'm gonna tell you about, Shadi. You better, you better get your weight up, bro. You know why? Cause you made a lot of enemies, and you made a lot of enemies, and you going to the feds. So the feds got gangsters from all over the United States, bro. It's not New York where. You know, you go into upstate Attica, Clinton, and you got some trays up there that can hold you down. Because, uh, bro, you go into the Fetty Wops, bro. And you know what that, you got gangsters looking for you. All that heat you, all them um, French you was throwing out to dudes that was in Houston. <laughs> Yo, hold it down, homie. And you got that peanut head, too. Yo, homie, man, God bless you dudes, man, that couldn't make the transition from the streets to businessmen. You dudes is bugged out, man. And I want to talk about that, too. Making a transition from the streets to a businessman. Like, like I was saying, you cannot take the, you can't take the hood out of dude. You can take the dude out the hood, but you can't take the hood out of dude. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what it is. These guys can't transition to, uh, to a businessman, to a CEO. They can't make the transition because they lack the skills. And they don't even know how to play the game to put the game face on all I know is all I know is gorilla, grizzly, gorilla, gorilla. Yo, you can't be like that. Yo, you had the bag, man. Now, y'all in the fags, bro? Y'all looking stupid in the face right now on some real shit. Y'all looking crazy. Yo, y'all had everything, bro. Y'all had an artist that was getting a quarter million a show, yo. And he was selling units that really nobody doing. He was breaking international international records. National, international records. He was doing it all. And you let that go? Man, you know what it is, bro? Some people, some people want to be gangster celebrities. That's what's going on in the internet nowadays. Because you look at it. I've never seen so many people that's in the streets record their they crimes and shit. You know what I'm saying? Get on fucking social media and be like, yo, I can't wait to get that hood over there. I'm going to put some work over there. I actually heard this shit on YouTube. Niggas like, I can't wait to get that block. And count the money. Yo, you think the feds is like, yo, what the fuck these niggas generate this money from? Like with BMF. You know what I'm saying? This dude had a billboard. He wanted everybody to know he was getting it. I'm like, yo, the ones that stay out and quiet is the quiet money dudes. The the, the moguls, the real gangsters that be in the backs. Not saying these dudes ain't gangsters that be out there, but if you a real gangster and you in the lifestyle, you get you can't push yourself out there, man. You know what I'm saying? You running the risk. Of, of being a target, bro. And everybody being on you. You're supposed to be clandestine, man. It's as secretive as it's, it's possible. So dudes is like really tripping on that. You want to be a gangster, but you want everybody to know you were killing a gangster and you get money. So obviously you want to go to jail. Uh hello. You want to go to prison? And then when you're in there. Then you fighting cases, like you losing all your money, you losing all your bitches, you just losing everything. Everybody leaving, and you trying to get the pills, and then what? You a mortar now? Like people say, oh, that's the real homie? Yo, yeah, he ain't snitching. Yeah, nobody's snitching, but now you got an asshole full of time. The feds don't be playing. So talk about that. Let's talk about 
how people can make the transition from CEO to just from gangster to CEO. And one of the biggest people that failed at it had to be Suge Knight. Now, the the earliest recordings of Suge Knight, it was like he wasn't really in the street banging, but he was more or less college kid, a big football player, whatever. So I, it wasn't no early recordings of him banging blood on the streets of, of Bompton or whatever. So, but I did hear that he was gangster. Like I heard it from a lot of people that he was a gangster, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we get at the show, but he couldn't tone down the gangsterism. Like he scared everybody and they wanted to get rid of him. You can't be that aggressive, man. Especially in society, man. You got to tone your blackness down and your hood down. Or just go all the way out being a gangster and die like it. Live by the sword, die by it. You know what I'm saying? If you feel that way, you shouldn't even complain once you catch the um once you catch them numbers and the fans give out the football numbers, the football jersey numbers. You know, they get them numbers. It ain't like the state. The state will give you like, you know, 7 to 12, 7 to 15 and all that. Feds, yo, give me this 30. Hold that 30 down. You're like, oh, you're doing the 85% of the 30, bro. It's the same, same for New York State. So making a transition, people can't do it. Like, they want to be out there. They want to be like, I want everybody to know I'm a gangster. Like, I, I hear you, but I don't want to be in jail no more. I got PTSD and anxiety. I can't be in nobody's cell. Don't get it twisted. I will push your melon back if you try me. But I'm more of a thinker. I cannot go back in the cells, bro. To be honest with you, I did four years of solitary. And I developed mental illnesses behind this shit. Not saying I'm crazy, but I get claustrophobia, bro. If you leave me in the room too long, yo, my mind start bugging. Because you know why? I had to hold that four years down. And there wasn't nobody there to hold me down when I was starving. I mean, I had business. I'm talking about when you in that cell, you ain't coming out that bitch, bro. You not coming out that cell. So, and then the upstate boxes, them sisters, your back of your cell opened up. So you really never really left your cell, bro. But in Southport, sorry about that. But in Southport, you could leave your cell. At least you, in Southport, they'd walk you out to the pens and you'd be in the cages and you could get some fresh air and all that. But upstate, the back of your cell open up. You in there with another nigga and unless you just locking bunkies out, no bunkies getting in this motherfucker because that bunkie shit is terrible, homie. So I was a Southport dude. You know what I'm saying? I did two in Southport and two in Upstate. So I had the best, well, I had experienced both of them. And um, I just ain't going back to nobody's cell. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they was after me and I knew I was doing numbers, yo, homie, kill me in the street because I'm being free. Lay me down. If I do another crime and they after me, I am not giving up. I am not going to offer myself to nobody's prison. You got to chase me down. Or whatever, we gotta go out in a, in a blaze of glory because yo, homie, I'm not going back in the cells, homie. I did them cells, yo, and when you in hindsight, when you think about them cells and how they looked, I I don't see how I survived in Auburn. You know what I'm saying? Yo, them cells is mad small. Sing sing, yo, you could touch the walls like this. And you got your bed in there, you're sinking in all your property. So in hindsight, when I look, it's like, yo, how did I do that shit? I'm not going back. You got to kill me in the street, homie. But this video is for everybody that want to be a, a celebrity gangster. Yo, stop it, yo. Stop getting on, uh, um, on, on social media and, and having all your goons and, yo, we got this block. Like, that shit is whack. Like, quiet money, homie. You don't want no feds on you because unless you want to be in somebody's cell, I don't think you want that. Uh, no pussy. Can't watch TV. You can't do nothing. So, one. It's crummy, Peace world to promote your music or promote your business by placing an ad on MREC TV. Contact MREC TV promo M R E C K T V promo at gmail.com. Peace. Oh, yeah, subscribe to MREC TV, youtube.com slash MREC TV. I'm gone. <laughs>